Hi folks, it's Andy and welcome to The Kendo Show. Today we're talking all about Debano Waza. Fantastic topic, can't wait to get stuck into it. Before I do though, quick shout out to Manchester Kendo Club. Thank you very much for helping me out with today's video. Also, don't forget to do your kendo shopping at kendostar.com. It's a top quality equipment website that I run myself, specifically with the international community in mind. Okay, so let's get over to kendostar.com whenever you need something. Right, with that being said, let's get into the video. Okay, let's talk about Debana Waza. So, there's two main kinds of Debana Waza. There's Debana Men and there's Degote or Debana Kote. Okay, and the Debana Waza, the concept of it is striking literally at the moment your opponent decides to strike. That means not during their strike, not even before their strike. The idea is, is that you're supposed to strike at the moment they decide to strike. Now, how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you what not to do, okay? What we're, going to do, what we're not going to do is once we're in our uh, cutting distance, I'm not going to wait for him to attack. When he decides to attack, oh, I'll try and attack. Okay, because I will definitely be late, yeah? He's going to hit my men, and I'm not going to hit his. Or even if I do, it will be too late. It will not be Debanawaza, okay? So I mustn't sit here waiting for him to attack me. Same goes for Kote, okay? I'm going to wait for him to attack, this kind of kote does not count as debanawaza. Even if I hit the kote, like this, or one more time, Ooh, like this, this is never going to count as the debana kote, okay? Um, more likely, I will be uh, receiving the men. He will be awarded the men point. Instead, what we have to do is we have to force him to attack. Now, this is a lot harder than it sounds, but basically, during a kendo interaction, there often becomes a point where he feels his only, only option is to strike at my men. We have to figure out how to make that. Now, there's lots of different ways, and it depends on the opponent, so I can't give you a, a definite way to do that just in one video. You have to kind of figure that out yourself through your own practice, through your own experience. <clears throat> but what you will do is you will start to realize, oh, when I do this, this person feels like he wants to attack my men or he becomes more encouraged to attack my men. Once you're able to recognize that in your opponents, that's when we're going to be able to make our debanawaza, okay? So once I've got him into this position where he's all tense, I know that whatever happens, the next thing he's going to want to do is come for my men as fast as he can, like this. I can then use this to my advantage. I can use this knowledge to my advantage. And how I'm going to do this is from my cutting distance, I'm going to start with my feet. This is super important. I'm not starting with my hands, okay? I'm starting with my feet. The movement, simply for me, is my left foot must not move, okay? If you try and do this kind of men, if you practice your kihon men, for example, by moving your left foot first, I'm going to strike you like this. Before hitting, you cannot do Debanawaza like this, okay? Oh, I'm going to make him hit like this, like this. You're never going to hit him in time. You must be able to strike instantly without moving your left foot. From your cutting distance, and the movement I'm going to make is I'm going to start to apply semi, apply pressure by moving forward with my right foot this way, okay? Moving forward with my right foot. It's carrying, my left leg is now carrying all of my body weight as my right foot comes out forward, this way. In response to this pressure, I've already built him up in the previous interaction uh, to a state where he is going to want to attack once he receives this pressure. Okay, so I know then that I'm essentially pressing his button. Yeah, I'm essentially pressing his go button by leading out with my right leg here. And this is what allows me to strike this Debana Men, okay? So one more time, from here. I, I, we're already in this position where there's a lot of tension between us. I've already applied lots of semi. He's starting to feel like he doesn't have much uh, choice or many options, and I decide to press his go button, okay? By leading with this right leg. Men. Like this, okay? Now, Devana Kote, it's exactly the same. However, what you have to bear in mind 
is you have to think about distance a little bit. If I start my degote, my debana kote or degote waza from the same point as my debana men, I'm going to have to make a massive movement with the shinai. Okay? Like this, and it's going to be much harder for me. Instead, I'm going to start from a slightly further out position, but I've still built us into this point of pressure, okay? So I'm ready to press his button to make him come and attack me again. But this time, instead of going straight for his men, I step out with the right foot and I hit the kote, okay? I have to judge this. I have to have planned this in advance, okay? This isn't something that I can just decide on the spot. If I'm here and I'm already starting to lead out with my right leg, and I'm deciding at this point, mm, shall I do men or shall I do kote? This is too late. Okay, this, this kind of waza has to be premeditated. You can't just decide it on the spot. Okay, so from here, perhaps I'm at this distance. I'm going to start that semi, and he's going to come for men. And this time, I knew in, uh, beforehand I was going to go for kote. Same interaction. Men. Okay, this time I knew beforehand that I would strike men. Okay, this is the basis of how Dibanawaza works. Okay, so let's look at some common mistakes um, that we often see for Dibana Waza. First, if we're talking about Dibana men. As I said at the start of the video, the biggest mistake most of us make is waiting for the attack. Okay, so, uh, okay, I'm here, right, come and attack me, attack me. Oh, it's too late. Okay, this is not how to do Dibana Waza. It's impossible to do this way. Um, actually, it's, I wouldn't say it's impossible. It depends on the, uh, the opponent. If he's extremely slow or if he's very inexperienced, you might be able to do it, but you're taking a large gamble. Okay? It's not really the proper Dibana Waza. <clears throat> Secondly, you must not make a huge uh, swing of the shinai. Okay? Coming forward with the right foot. You can't make a huge swing of the shinai. Because you don't have time. Because he's coming to hit your men as fast as he can. Okay? It just won't work. Okay? You're going to get hit. Has to be short and sharp. Okay? Has to be short, sharp, and strong. Like this. One more time. This time he's going to attack me. Men! Okay? So it's a nice, clear ippon. Yuko datotsu. One more time. Men! Okay, this so unquestionably the vanawaza. The worst situation, uh, well, the worst situation is that you are too late and you get hit. The next worst situation after that is that you hit pretty much at the same time. Okay, like a kind of ayuchi or aimen. Some people even call uh, the banamen aimen, but I think it's a little incorrect. It's not ideal for this situation to happen. Because this is very difficult, especially for the uh, competition, for the referees to judge who has made the correct strike. You have to hit before he hits, okay? It's easier said than done, of course. But if I have set everything up properly, and I'm in control of the situation, and I'm the one that's pressing the go button, then I'm the one that's gonna hit first, right? So, let's, let's give it a try. Okay, this is quite clearly my men, okay? And the uh, receiver, <laughs> the person that's uh, receiving your men, 
will know that they have been hit with Devana Min. Okay? It's, a, it's quite a distinctive feeling. So for Devana Kote or Degote, there's quite a lot of mistakes that people make. Again, the most common one is waiting. Right, come on, come on, come on, come on. And trying to hit like this. Okay? It's just not gonna, it's not gonna work. Like this. Yeah? This is not how to do Degote. Again, we start the procedure. We are the ones that uh, initiate everything. We press the go button. Okay? Again, like this. Okay? Also, swinging the shinai diagonally. This is very common, but it is very, uh, very bad because you very rarely hit the target if you swing the shinai this way. In slow motion, this, he's gonna, Tom's going to come and hit my men very, very uh, straight, like this. Okay? His hands are going to go straight, like this. Okay? So if his hands, I'm trying to hit him here. Okay? His hands from here, this is where I'm trying to hit him. Not here, okay? or here. <laughs> yeah? I'm trying to hit him here. Now, if he stays there, which is the point I'm trying to hit him, and I try to swing this shinai diagonally, there is no route to his kote, okay? I have to hit straight in order to be able to hit the target properly, okay? So swinging diagonally is not going to work. Again, if he st tries to attack my men, like this, we see this often, it's not correct. Also, if it's too late, we're already here, and I'm trying to hit like this, sideways, like this, this is not correct. This is not yuko datotsu, okay? Finally, the zanshin, especially for kote. Um, it, part of zanshin is having correct posture, okay? And this starts at the beginning of the strike, during the strike, and after the strike. What I don't want to do is this kind of kote. Okay? Like this. Like this. I'm not even looking at the target, okay? So I'm not even sure if I hit or miss. Or, like this. Yeah, this is incorrect. So that follows with poor zanshin. Completely turning my back to him. Okay, this is incorrect. Also, like this. This is also incorrect zanshin. Very slowly, my kote strike is straight straight and strong, okay? Afterwards, I can move, but I keep straight and I keep eye contact. The point of impact is perfectly straight. Actually, if you hit the solid degote like this, his men will stop. His men attack will stop because your strike will hit him, like I said, here, okay? He lifts his hands to hit, and you hit them back down. Yeah, it's like one of those things at the fairground where you whack a mole, yeah? It pops up, back down it goes, yeah? This is, maybe not literally, but this is how his spirit feels, yeah? Oh, like this, yeah? This happens a lot, okay? One more time, correctly, correct posture, good semi, we've built him up into a bit of a, um, situation where he's trigger happy and I'm going to press the button and I'm going to hit solid kote with straight correct posture. Kote. Like this. Okay? See how he, he can't complete the men in this case. Okay? So please remember that. Don't do those mistakes and then you'll have a correct and effective Debana Waza. Yeah!
So that was all about Dabanawaza. What did you think? Leave me a comment, let me know. It's a pretty tough set of techniques, but it's also forming the basis of a lot of other things. Things like Ojiwaza, uh, specifically some Nukiwaza, are really formed around the concepts of Dabanawaza. We'll be covering them in some future episodes, so make sure you subscribe and click the bell icon if you're on YouTube uh, so that you get notified next time we upload one, so you can check that out as well. Don't forget as well, you can join the early access group. That's a link down in the description. It's on Facebook. There's no charge, of course, it's totally free. You just click on that. We approve you in, into it and then you get to see these episodes a little bit before everybody else. So there's no reason not to. So make sure you click on that. Make sure you share and like the video and, you know, post it on Facebook, share with all your friends. Hopefully we can spread the message of Kendo around the world uh, through this medium. So, yeah, make sure you do all that. Leave a thumbs up if you liked the video, uh, thumbs down if you didn't, <laughs> whatever you want to do. Uh, leave me a mean comment, whatever. It's all good. Uh, and, uh, and make sure you click all the social buttons. Finally, you know what I'm going to say. Make sure you're shopping at kendostar.com. Kendostar is the website that I run. It pays for this channel, of course. It's what helps me keep bringing these videos to you. But that's not the only reason you should shop there. It's top quality gear that's specifically designed with you in mind. It's protective, it's comfortable, it looks great. Uh, I'm heading up the customer service. Essentially, I'm in charge of the whole thing. So you know that you can put your trust in us uh, and it's me that's really gonna be checking and making sure everything goes smoothly. Okay, so make sure that you're shopping at kendostar.com. So that's it for today. Like I said, we've got new episodes coming very, very soon. Make sure that you're subscribed so you can make sure that you're up to date with them and we'll see you in the next one.